everybody, it's Mr. Matthew here. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how ATP is the source of chemical energy for most cellular work. Uh, in this case, we're gonna start by talking about the structure of ATP, what is that? I'm gonna give an example of how uh, ATP is used to do some work. And then I'll review the ATP ADP cycle and talk about um, how we break ATP down and how we recharge it from ADP in order to have more available uh, stored energy. So here we go. So let's start with this molecule. This is ATP. Well, first is what does ATP stand for? It stands for adenosine triphosphate. And so when we talk about adenosine triphosphate, we are looking at an adenosine molecule. That's this over here on the right. And then we see three phosphates over on the left. So what does this mean? Well, phosphates are these high energy components and they are very similar chemically and so when you stack three of them together there's a lot of potential energy in this molecule and one analogy I like to use when I think about what is ATP is I like to think about the difference between a paycheck and cash so let's say you go out and you have a job and you get a paycheck and then you take that paycheck and you want to go to Dunkin Donuts and buy yourself a hot chocolate and you walk in with your paycheck and you're waving it around they'll look at you like you're crazy. Well, that's kind of like what happens when glucose comes into a cell. Glucose is this big potential energy molecule, and obviously we eat sugars in order to have energy, or we eat carbohydrates in order to have energy. We get those carbohydrates broken down into monosaccharides, we bring them into the cell, and then we wanna use the energy that's there. We can't use that energy, so what do we do? Our cells break that down, we break those sugars down and we make ATP. And ATP is the cash of the cell. It's something that your cells can spend in little tiny increments by just transferring a phosphate over and do lots of little bits of work. Um, and so that's the analogy I like to think about it. ATP is the cash for your cells, spendable, usable energy. Now, here's an example of what we call a sodium potassium pump. So this is a pump that's gonna push sodium outside a cell and potassium into a cell. Now, large particles, charged particles, they don't necessarily go across the membrane particularly easily. And especially if you have more sodium already outside the cell and more potassium inside, it's really hard to get sodiums and potassiums across. But there are times when you're gonna to wanna to concentrate um, types of molecules on the membrane and you want to concentrate large molecules or charged molecules on different parts of the membrane. And so how do you overcome the the tendency of molecules to to have a hard time getting through this membrane? Well, you use a pump. And so what we'll do here is we'll see that as ATP comes along, it turns into ADP plus P and that P represents a phosphate that's transferred from the adenosine triphosphate onto this sodium potassium pump. When that phosphate binds to the pump, it's gonna cause it to slightly change in shape. And that slight change in shape is gonna be enough of a shift in the form of that protein that's gonna push sodiums from the inside of the cell to the outside and push potassiums from the outside to the inside. Now, this is a very subtle shift and I'm only using one ATP to do this, but it's gonna allow me to set up and contain uh, molecules in particular locations. All right, so this is one example of how the cell could do work. Really, any time a cell wants to use energy, let's say we're talking about moving um, a compound from one part of the cell to another, or we're talking about moving things along a given protein or altering a sh uh, the shape in a cell, all of these things are gonna require a little bit of energy, and each time those molecules are moved, a little bit of ATP is gonna be spent and broken down into ATP in order to move those molecules around. So how does this cycle all come together? We start with ATP along the top and we can see that we have this high energy phosphoanhydride bond, which is just a fancy name to say we got a high energy bond between two phosphates there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that phosphate, we're gonna break it off and we're gonna attach it to some molecule. The molecule is labeled as R here. That R in this case could be that protein we looked at in the previous slide, that membrane protein. And when we do that, we're gonna transfer some of the energy from ATP into that protein and now that protein is gonna be a little bit unstable, it's gonna have a little bit of capacity to do some cellular work okay. and something is gonna get done in the cell. Now what we'll see is that as a result of this we're gonna be left with adenosine diphosphate or ADP. 
how do I go from ADP back to ATP? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through one of the reactions that's associated with um, breaking down sugars, and that could be glycolysis, uh, the citric acid cycle, oxidative phosphorylation. These are all three parts of breaking sugars down and extracting all of the potential energy. All of those will do that. You'll also see photosynthesis, and photosynthesis also has the ability to take light energy and use the energy from light to put a phosphate onto an ADP and charge that up. So these are all reactions that allow us to go uphill, create these high uh, energy products, and those eight high energy products in this case are gonna be ATP. And so now we'll have ATP. And so this is something that's constantly happening in your cells. Um, it's using this cycle of ATP and ADP, recharging the, the used energy to get back to that potential to do energy. And this is one of the reasons why we eat, so that we can take in molecules and then break them down through all of these processes in order to charge up and make sure we have enough ATP so our cells can do work. All right, that was a pretty quick review of ATP um, and ADP. We'll come back and talk a lot about this throughout the year, uh, particularly as we get into things like cell respiration photosynthesis much later in the year. But I hope this is a good start for you and gives you a little bit of picture of this really important biological molecule.